In this lesson, we're going to be looking at different ways of using constructions, again, straight edge and compass, to create parallel or perpendicular lines. Now, a lot of these are going to fall back to theorems resulting from congruent angles. And with our congruent angles, we can use alternate interior or corresponding is the most common. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a line that is parallel to line AB passing through point C. And to do this, we're going to start by creating a transversal across the future parallel lines that passes through A and C. So first thing I do is I create a line or can create a ray that passes through AC. Now I'm going to copy the angle that exists for C, A, B. So again, to copy an angle, I bring my compass down, I mark out location of intersection, I then recreate that same arc set up above. Now, using my compass, I measure the distance between those two points of intersection and bring it up to my second location mark it and I have now gotten the materials I need to create a line parallel to the first that passes through that second point. Now in order to do this what I did in reality was I created congruent angles here so this would be using the uh, corresponding angles theorem if I had instead created similar or congruent angles as shown by the double arcs, that would be using alternate interior angle theorem, but the procedure would have been the same. So that is the essence of creating parallel lines. Perpendicular lines have a couple more options, a couple more ways of doing them. So let's take a look at that. So the first perpendicular line I'm going to create is a line perpendicular to AB that passes through point P. And in order to do this, what I'm going to do is similar to what we did for a perpendicular bisector of our first set of constructions. I'm going to grab my compass and measure out that distance between A and P. Then rotate it around and create a point that's equidistant so P becomes the midpoint of this new line segment. Now, bringing this back, I can extend out just a little bit so I'm more than halfway. Bring it up, create my arcs above and below point P and do that on both sides. And as soon as I do that, the line segment that I create, or the line I create that passes through either one of those arc intersects and point P will be perpendicular to it. So if I want to create a line segment, I go from this intersection up to this one, and I now have a perpendicular line segment to AB that passes through point P. What happens, however, if P is not on the line that we're trying to create the perpendicular? For instance, if P is raised up to this location, how can I create that perpendicular line? Well, I'm going to start by copying that arc that goes from A to P, bring it over, and find the intersection point with AB. Now, by bringing my compass over, I can create an arc below AB at that point, rotate around, and find that point of intersection going from A. Now create a line that passes through P and that new arc intersection point, and we'll call it C line P 
PC is going to be perpendicular to AB. So those are the different situations you'll see when you're trying to create a perpendicular line. Now between parallel and perpendicular lines, we have a lot of different applications. Being given a set of line segments, we can create rectangles or parallelograms from these, uh, knowing the definitions of those. Uh, we can create a square, which is a special type of rectangle. And we can work with other geometric shapes. For instance, if we were to start with a triangle, and want to create a line segment perpendicular to AB that passes through C. It's the same thing that we just did. I'm going to grab compass and create it this time from C to B because that is what's closest. Lock that into place. Swing this around. Mark the arc. Take that and create something else. Now if it is too long to the point where we wouldn't see that intersection point. Well, what you can do, shorten up the compass a bit. Just make sure you're over halfway, half that distance. Now bring it down. If I arc and make my markings here, swing it around and go to there, that will create my point of equidistance. Now going through and pulling my line segment, go from C to that other point, and that line segment that was just created is going to be perpendicular to AB passing through point or connecting with point C. So a lot of the applications will come as you practice using these and just know your definitions. How can these items be interrelated and how can I use what I know to construct a different idea that I might not know? So take a look over these constructions, be ready to practice and use them. Make sure you have a straight edge and compass handy because that's the tools of the trade.